My name is Stephen Lee. I've been at the Australian Astronomical Observatory since 1977. I've seen more sunsets and sunrises than most people ever get to do. And I'm here as a night assistant. During the night, you have to go outside in the dark to check on the clouds. There are instruments that tell you what's going on, but one likes to go outside to look and feel the sky. Why is astronomy important to this town? It's the people that work up there. I don't know how many times I've been up there and met some of these people, but uh, yeah, I think it's the, one of the greatest assets this town has. My telescopes here are just a small version of a professional telescope. Back in 1999, I discovered a comet. It just so happens that there was an award by the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory of some money. With that money, I was able to build my dome, which houses my telescope. This has been a tremendous pleasure for me to, to know that my hobby and my work just coexist together. My job's a mixture of many things. Primarily, I'm there to keep the telescope working. The telescope was built in the 1970s. At the time, it was one of the largest. While it's no longer the largest, it is still one of the most productive telescopes in the world. David Malin and I had a lot of fun observing together. He did all the photographic work. Looking back at these dusty boxes, these glass plates, this is how astronomy used to be done. It was a different world then compared to today. The telescope, as it was originally designed, was going to be taking photographic plates, large glass plates that were going to take many hours to expose. The observatory has 14 dark rooms. However, only four of those were ever used as dark rooms because the technology had moved on. David and I used to use those dark rooms to process the photographic plates. I've always been interested in, in nature. I was interested in, in light and colour from a, a very early age. And I always wondered why the sky was blue and what made the grass green and the flowers coloured. And had a wonderful time here taking pictures of all kinds of things, mainly scientific. But a spin-off from this was also colour photographs. Uh, which at the time were quite striking because nobody had taken really good colour photographs of the sky before. So that gave you a bit of a reputation as a colour photographer. These three pictures show the stages of evolution of stars. The first shows their formation inside a beautiful red nebula. The second is when the stars are living their long, long lives in this case in a cluster. Later, stars explode a supernova and leave shreds of their material sitting on the sky. And those shreds are the stuff that you and me are made of. Supernova 87A was a very exciting time at the observatory. The supernova, an exploding star, was such a dominant new thing in the sky. There hadn't been a supernova seen with the naked eye for more than 400 years. I took the first photograph of the supernova. This was then sent back to Dave and his colleagues for analysis. You can use this as a kind of history book to flick through the pages and see how stars were developing in real time now and how they developed many billions and millions of years ago. That's really fascinating. It's kind of archeology span in a way. January the 13th, 2013, was a rather terrifying experience for all of us. There was a small fire that had started in the Warren Bungles. The temperatures were over 40 degrees for those few days. That fire turned into a raging inferno. That fire came to within a kilometre of my place, but it came to within metres of the observatory. I can see the dome from home and uh, 
and the number of times I saw it just disappear into, into the fire cloud and you'd see a number of planes going in to, uh, to fight the fire. Yeah, I thought on a number of occasions there we'd lost it. It's a billion dollar asset. The Siding Springs Observatory receives around 20,000 visitors a year. The Australian Astronomical Observatory is really important to our tourism because Coonabarabran is the astronomy capital of Australia. Where else would you find a telescope in your neighbour's backyard? And as you drive from Coonabarabran out to Siding Spring Observatory, it does feel like that. that there seem to be telescopes dotted everywhere along Timor Road. It's such a draw card for people with great knowledge and the science that's carried on up there is just amazing. I'm one of the team of instrument designers and builders with the Australian Astronomical Observatory. It's a very rewarding part of my job. Technology is changing all the time. If you look at photography, we used to be able to take five or six photographic plates in one night. With the instrumentation now, we would be looking at 20 to 30,000 galaxies in a single night. The observatory spectrographs have measured the distances to about a third of all the galaxies that have been measured. A spectrograph is the workhorse tool of the observatory. The spectrum, the rainbow fingerprint of an object, tells you how fast an object is travelling through space, its chemical composition, how hot it is. The Australian Astronomical Observatory has had many major successes over the years. The most recent would have been the Galaxy Redshift Survey, where we observed over a quarter of a million galaxies. We've had a number of generations of robots, and the technologies that we're inventing now will keep us at the forefront of Australian and world astronomy. It's a very rewarding experience to help make these precise instruments that will help unravel the secrets of the universe. It's a good feeling at the end of a successful night. The conditions were perfect, there were no problems, and the astronomers will go away with the best data possible that you have helped make work. Science in general, and astronomy in particular, is a pursuit that a mature civilization will do so that they can understand their position in the universe.